Modular combinations. 784 to 78 mod 7. How do you compute this efficiently? What is the choose operator? Recall the definition of choose and permute. In mathematics, a combination is a selection of items from a collection, such that, unlike permutations, the order of selection does not matter. For example, given the three operating systems, Windows, Mac, and Linux, there are three combinations of two that can be drawn. So we have Windows and Mac, Windows and Linux, or Mac and Linux. The combinations formula is as follows. For n choose k, we can expand it out to be equal to n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. The intuition for this is if you have n items to choose from, the first item you can pick any n, afterwards n minus 1, and so on. Also, there's k factorial ways to shuffle the, number, the items you picked, so that reduces the order principle of The very first algorithm we can try is simply brute force. We manually apply the formula and then apply the modulo operation. However, we note that 40 factorial is a gigantic number, and unfortunately, this may not fit in memory, so can we do better? Despite the algorithm being correct, we can easily overflow due to factorial operations. The first thing is that we'll be introducing Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle looks like a typical triangle. We start off with ones at the top, and then for each of the cells, we look up and left one, if appropriate, and we add those two numbers like this. We continue populating Pascal's triangle. So what is the significance of Pascal's triangle? Well, the first thing is we notice that it's symmetrical, which means we can take it, shift it like this, and we notice that we don't need most of those cells. But the more important observation is that we can use it to find combinations. We have a Pascal's triangle here, where we let n be the y, and k be the x, and actually rewrite this as different combinations. And the most critical observation of this is that for each cell C and R, we can represent this as C of n minus 1, R minus 1, plus C of n minus 1, R. Which is just simply the fact that for each cell in Pascal's triangle, we look up one and one to the left. Using this observation, we can compute choose combinations simply using Pascal's triangle. So this is amazing, so we can just simply take a recursive approach and then build up Pascal's triangle using this. We return an integer, in the base case k equals 0, k equals n, we return 1. Otherwise, we just simply add up the cells up and then to the left diagonal. However, our first observation is we have overlapping subproblems. And for this, we can use dynamic programming or memoization. You may realize that we're calling this recursively, and there's nk states because each time we either reduce n by 1 or keep it the same or reduce k by 1. So, because of that, we can use memoization to catch the recursive calls and get time complexity of O of nk or O of OK time. So we can do this, for example, you can pause the video if you're interested to look into the specifics, but in a bottom-up way, like this, which just simply uses the formula I mentioned before. And more specifically, we notice that we only ever need to look up one row higher in Pascal's triangle. So because of that, we can actually just simply use an optimization where we use just simply one flat array. But can we perform better? The thing is, in Pascal's triangle, a row becomes 10 to the 9, we might run out of space, even using the another program. Introducing Lucas's theorem. Lucas's theorem states for non negative integers n and r with the prime p, the following congruence relation holds, and choose r is equal to the product of numbers ni, ni, ri, mod p, where we take n and r and produce a decomposition in terms of factors of p. So recall that p is prime, and this is the most significant thing. Doing this, we actually yield a tank complexity of o p squared plus log base p of n, and our space complexity is o p. So how does this actually look? The code is actually very simple. Take n choose r mod p lucas. Now inside of this we have our base case r is equal to 0 where we return 1. And then what we do is we take ni and compute ri. So where does this even fit in? So we look at our formula. We know that it's a decomposition of p to the k plus something p to the k minus 1 plus something 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 plus and we take p to the 0 which is n naught. If we take n mod p then effectively what we're doing is we're getting that n naught value. When we get that n naught value, we can actually just simply compute it using our previous approach of n choose r using the dp approach, as we can see at the top. Afterwards, if we divide everything by p, then we actually find out that when we divide by p, we reduce the power of p to the k to p to the k minus 1, p to the k minus 1 to p to the k minus 2, and so on. We get rid of the n0, we just simply repeat that process. Repeating this process yields the time complexity of o to the p squared plus log base p of n. It's actually a very simple algorithm, and you can pause the video if you want to look into more depth, but it's very straightforward. 
So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.